fans, welcome to another edition of Pirate Football Classics with our head coach, Steve Mushagian. And we also have uh, two special guests, offensive coordinator Jeff Fisher and defensive coordinator Michael Hayden. And we're going to talk about the 2018 SoCal Football Championship game down at Riverside City College. Uh, just a little background for our, our viewers. The year before, we head down there in the first round. Starting quarterback gets hurt. Tough game. Uh, you know, one of our former players is there, Brendan Daly, former assistant. You know, he, he was kind of a big story in the 18 season. Now in 2018, we're back. Same location, almost a year to the day when Brendan passed away. And now we're playing for the SoCal Championship. So, you know, Coach Moose, I'm going to kind of let you guys just kind of talk about that week, <laughs> preparation, and, and that game, and, and the emotions that ran throughout that whole week. Well, we talked about it last week. We brought it up a little bit about how we wanted to practice on Thanksgiving. That was kind of like a significant moment for us. And and I'm telling you, that day, I think it, it really uh, got started that day where the belief came. Uh, it was a beautiful, sunny day. Got there at 10 a.m., I remember getting on the field and it was just a feeling that we hadn't had before. And it was so crisp and everybody was so focused and their goals, they just really believed that they, you know, we had enough guys that had been there in 2017 that uh, understood what it was like. And we didn't want to end our season on that field. And we used that in our, you know, in our pregame talks and, we, we also talked in the pregame about Brendan Daly. That was the last place we saw him um, before he passed. And I think it was it, it set the emotion for that game because going into it on paper, you know, Riverside had some, <laughs> they had guys that were going, getting recruited by Ole Miss and USC. And, you know, they, they, they probably had six or seven uh, Division One guys on that team. And, you know, everybody kept telling us that, uh, you know, I don't know if you're going to be able to run the ball against them, or I don't know if you're going to be able to slow them down on offense. And, and we kind of took it as a challenge and, you know, the credit to both our offense and defensive staff, they put together some great, uh, great game plans. And in our kids, we got healthy. It was, it was kind of ironic how we finally found who we, what we, we are and we got healthy and, I think we've, we, our quarterback play finally got caught up to where the rest of the offense was. We had a really experienced offensive line. We had really good running backs. And then we had, uh, you know, we had a couple of receivers that, that could get it. If we just got the ball, got enough time and got the ball up to them, they could make plays. And defensively, they were clicking. They played so great against Canyons that I knew, that, you know, they'd keep going. And so we kept them in the, uh, we kept the same uniform combo with the, with the gray pants and the white jerseys uh, as requested by the guys. Probably the biggest screw up I made was not wearing that in the state game too, but uh, that's for another story. But the, the kids played really, really well. And it was a four quarter game. Um, I, I think my Fitbit went over 15,000 steps pacing up and down the sideline. And uh, I'll let, I'll let these guys, uh, I'll, let, uh, I'll bring it to, J to Jeff because what they, what we did offensively, we, we created a ton of matchups and they did a great job of finding those matchups and our quarterbacks executed it. So it was, it was great. I don't even know if we had Thomas Duckett very much in that game too, because he had got hurt against Canyons, our number one tailback. So, and I think we lost our number one uh, offensive guard going in the game. I think we lost two starters going in or we're limited, but Jeff, why don't you take it from the offensive point of view from this point? Yeah, we, uh, going into it, we didn't know how much Thomas Duckett was going to be able to go. He got banged up the week before and then, um, pregame warmup, Mason Knight couldn't go. And then we had a great game by, uh, the two guys backing him up. Gil Scott Jackson was lights out consistent the whole night. And, uh, I believe it was Christian Malupe yep. played, right? Christian. Yep. Left right in and you couldn't tell that, there was any backups in there at all. Um, that was one of those games that uh, on paper, a lot of ways, it looked like, you know, Riverside might have been the team to, to, they were the number one seed. You know, they had a lot of things going for, for them. 
And uh, our, our guys really, like Coach said, really believed that week. And it was a different mindset going into it. I think, you know, that group was so close too, so tight knit. And it, it was, it made a huge difference. You can see it in that game. And um, like you said, we got healthy in some other areas. Brandon Jordan was beat up going before that and got healthy going into the, that playoff run. And um, from an offensive standpoint, created a lot of mismatches because uh, the amount of man, uh, man coverage Riverside was playing. We put them in some slot positions to get them matched up on a few people in the, for their, against their safeties. And um, he came up huge and, and uh, played lights out. Really, in my opinion, was you know the game changer from an offensive standpoint. When a play needed to be made, he came up every single time and, and found a way to get the ball and, and do some amazing things to, to one, keep us on the field um, and, and kind of controlling that game where it was, uh, you know, it was a dog fight. It was a dog fight all the way. And we, we really controlled the game um, on both sides of the ball, uh, staying on the field, our time of possession. We won so many of those, those little stats that, you know, a lot of people don't look at. We, we won all those, those third down conversions um, offensively and defensively for us. We won all those stats, which was big time and obviously caused us to, to win a SoCal championship and, and move on. So it was, it was a unbelievable experience an unbelievable game. And one of those games you'll never forget, you know, um, and the, the moment of the, the, the horn going off at the end was, was pretty special. And a lot of kudos to Moose getting those guys ready to go. Um, I still tell people to this day, it was the best pregame speech as well. That was the best pregame speech I've heard in, in my entire football career. Um, and then Coach Hayden, you know, the defense was lights out that game. You know, that, that offense Riverside had was putting up, you know, mega points the entire year. And I believe we held them at 21. And, um, I mean, lights out on third down. Those critical downs were huge. Um, and so, yeah, that, it, was, it was one of those big-time big time moments in our, in our uh, you know, on our football team and big-time game. So let's it talk was, about um, the defense. Then, you know, you guys got the offense going, uh, game plan, the whole thing. You know, the other side of the ball, the defense, like uh, Coach Fisher said, 21 points to a high-powered offense. You know, so, Mike, how was that for you on defense? You know, throughout the week uh, leading up to that Riverside game, we, we knew what kind of offense Riverside was. I mean, you look at it, they're scoring 42 points a game. They're putting up 500 yards a game. We knew they were explosive. And we, and we knew, like we talked about a little bit with Canyons, we knew it took us a little bit longer in 2018 to find that defensive identity. And when it started coming through in Canyons, we started to build that confidence. And going into that Riverside week, we knew who we were and we knew what we wanted to do. And because of that, you know, the guys took it as a challenge. Like everybody was talking about Riverside, Riverside, Riverside. And to all our guys, it was, hey, what about us? You know, we've got to this point. We've, we've won these games. And I think the other thing too, you know, looking back at it is, we always talk as coaches, there's one thing that you can't teach and that's experience. You know, we had been in some dog fights early in the year. We had, we had played high level competition in 2018 in 2019, you know, our conference was probably one of the top conferences in the state. It's a battle week in and week out. So we were battle tested at that point. And it really, you know, it was, the guys took it as a challenge. Um, so it was, a, it was actually a great week of practice. It was a lot of fun because, you know, everybody was looking at us like we don't have a chance. So at, for, for us and for our standpoint, it was like, why not just turn it loose? You know, the expectation, everybody thinks we're going to go out there and just get rolled, but that just means for us that we can leave it all on the table. And, no, you know, from our standpoint, we just looked at everybody else thinking, man, you guys are crazy, but – you know, the other thing, too, like like Fish mentioned third downs, you know, the other thing, too, I think we only had two penalties that entire game as a team. You know, we won the penalty battle as well, which is discipline. And and that's exactly what happened with our game plans. The kids were disciplined. They they did what we asked them to do, and they executed at a high level. And, um, you know, very similar to us, next man up, we, left, we lost Brett Moyer in that game. You know, one of our defensive events who we really he really started to find himself there in the previous weeks and 
you know, we had to adjust our alignment and put different guys in who never had played some of those positions. And it was just a, like, like, like both coaches said, it was just, I don't know. It was just such a special week that, you know, I could go on for hours and hours and hours, but nobody wants to listen to me talk about that. So. <laughs> it was, uh, I remember just to chime in, you know, when I think about the part that I remember the most was the camaraderie of that group. I remember the Thanksgiving meal that we had coaches were serving scooter scooter brought in some, uh, some Turkey and, and, uh, we all ate together and, you know, we just didn't want to be apart from each other. We got on the bus on Saturday and we, we did it totally different. We, we went to a restaurant for the first time to Buka, got out, you know, ate as a team. The meal was perfect. I mean, it couldn't have been better. I kudos to coach Morris, my uh, restaurant connoisseur that knows exactly where we need to stop. But, uh, and then we, then we did something different again. We got on the bus and we went to uh, another uh, junior college. We went to San Bernardino Valley and did our taping and our walkthroughs there. So we had, you know, got our pregame meal. We got our, our walkthroughs and our taping done. And we just loaded the bus and we were ready to go to war. We just pulled up at Riverside. We probably got there an hour before kickoff. We jumped off that bus got dressed and went on the field and played. And when they say the guys played 60 minutes of football, they, they really did. And the fact that we had three guys, you know, not just anybody, but all conference, all state type guys that got hurt and the next man up, you know, Gil Scott Jackson, Christian Malalupe. I mean, we used a whole bunch of different ones uh, on defense. Trennan was playing off the edge and, and Brad Taylor and Dondre Baker played great. Our secondary, I remember Kale Jackson and Donnie Dixon all over the field. And obviously Jalen Watson shut them down and their quarterback ended up being, was I believe the, the state's offensive player of the year. And we, you would have never known it against our defense because we, uh, I think he was four of 13 or something at one time on third down. I mean, he was just, he was skipping the ball. He just was frustrated and, you know, we mixed up the coverages and, you know, gave them a lot of different looks. But that was the, uh, if you ever had a, uh, you know, David and Goliath story, because nobody gave us a chance. Nobody gave us a chance. We, we had just knocked off the number one team, Canyons. And then we turned around and had to play the next number one team. And we handled them both in a manner that was just so business-like. And I, and I say it like that because... I've never had a group focus so hard for two weeks. And I firmly believe had that had, had the state game been, it was supposed to be at Ventura, it would have been a home game for us. And I don't know if, if, if the bye week having a, a week off, if we would have, if I don't know the way we were rolling, we would have probably been better off to play right away that next week, I think. I think we took a little time off. Maybe we got a little full of ourselves, but uh, by far one of the best, uh, one of the best people, you know, that I've been around kids, as far as the group of kids and the coaches, just a wonderful group of people. And, and our staff just, you know, everybody just did such a great job from our trainers, equipment managers, all the way up. It was, it was special for everybody. It was, it was a great week, uh, you know, from Sunday after the Canyons game, all the way to, till, uh, Saturday when the when the gun went off and you know just seeing the, those guys celebrate and taking that picture together and holding that trophy and Brandon Jordan getting the MVP just just great memories one of my favorites of my almost 40 years <laughs> so let's let's talk about pregame with our coordinators because I you know I know being on the field the last year with you coach Moose, we're walking around we're talking to referees you know you've got the game plan set with them how was it for you guys as coordinators going through, you know, it was a little quicker. You guys got there an hour before, usually it's two hours before. You know, so how was it to get them ready to play? Or was it kind of like, we're ready, let's go? Uh, I, I mean, I'll start with it. It was, um, I mean, like the guys were ready. The guys were definitely ready. It was, I remember that one being a little different um, just because of the, the couple Knicks, a uh, couple guys had, we were trying to see. Are they ready to go? Remember Koontz that game too was coming off an angle. We didn't we didn't think he was gonna be able to go. 
Um, and so it was kind of, you know, seeing how a few guys were warming up and going through, um, the mindset though, it, it was, those guys were very determined. It was, you know, it was, it was a relaxed feel, but it was, um, you know, it was serious. There wasn't, um, wasn't much screwing around going out, going on that day at all. Um, but it, it, no one was too tight either. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I would agree with that too. I think, you know, when you look at it uh, as coordinators, I, I always kind of joke about this, that our most stressful days are going to be Monday through Thursday. And by the time you get to game day, that's going to be a little bit easier. Whereas a head coach, you know, your Monday through Wednesday, you know, you're watching everything. And then by Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's where you have the stressful times. But, you know, when you, when you go in there with the type of confidence in your players and, and seeing the, the, the players confidence in themselves, it was a sense of calmness, you know, and going to Riverside is always a interesting place. It's like, it's dark there. The, the lights are different and it's got a, like a, a different vibe to that place. I don't know what it is, but um, the first couple of times we had gone there, you, you know, our guys, it kind of affected them a little bit, but I think at that point, because we had been there a couple of times, a lot of those guys had already been to that stadium and knew what to expect. It was just a different, it was just a different feeling. It was a, a, a different type of calmness, confidence. And, you know, like you mentioned earlier too, you know, it was almost a year to the day. That was the last time that a lot of those guys had saw Brendan. And so at the same time, there was that confidence, but there was also that chip on the shoulder you know, uh, they felt like they owed it to Brendan, you know, he went out of his way to fly back and come be there for that game. And that didn't, that, that wasn't lost on these guys. I mean, he made such an impact on a lot of our guys that there was, there was a little bit of, a little bit of that Brendan Daly swagger at the same time, like, Hey, no matter what we're coming at you, we're going to hit you in the chin and we're going to just let it loose. We're going to let it all hang out. And so, you know, you're still always got those nerves and you got those butterflies, but you know, the confidence in our guys at that point was just unquestionable. Yeah. So, you know, we talk about probably this win is the biggest win in school history and you do the pictures, the MVP, the defensive player, and then you guys go in the locker room. How is that feeling? Because that's something that you don't get to experience unless you're part of the group, right? Everyone else on the outside, you guys are, that group that's in there, the players, the coaching staff, the support staff that are with you guys, how was that locker room? And, and talk about maybe how does it compare to other locker rooms you've been a part of? Oh, wow. It was, it was wild going in. I was, I was busy trying to, I know we got the sandwiches delivered and uh, we were so excited. We ordered the sandwiches without ordering the drink. So we, uh, we had these great, sandwiches for the kids but uh <laughs> didn't forget the waters so uh we ended up <laughs> that's that's another story so I, I was i was laughing at that i was so happy i didn't care almost but uh you know these kids nowadays they bring five gatorades with them and have they have their pre-game and their snacks and everything it was wild in the locker room it was i remember the guys dancing around and happy and and uh, the music playing and We'd been in that locker room, like my first playoff game there, we were there in 14 and played our butts off and lost. We were there again in 17 and we really felt like that was a game we should have won. And, you know, because of injuries, we didn't. And so this was that great third time's a charm. And a lot of those guys, because a bunch of them were coaches, were players that were now coaches too, uh, Terrence Togia and, and Juan Soto and had been players during the 14 playoff game. So they were coming back. So I think there was just a ton of the confidence was if, if I could bottle the confidence that those kids had going into it and then the confidence they had coming out, wouldn't lose another game. But uh, as we know, the emotions, you know, that was, that, that's why it's so special. It really is. I think, I think coach Fisher and coach Hayden even danced around a little bit. <laughs> I, know, I know I made my wife. Um, she came in the game from a wedding, got in there late and we were ahead when she walked in and you know, they, they one of the people said, you brought us bad luck. So she went over and stood at the Riverside snack shack until we had the game under control before she came back. So she, 
I guess she went and jinxed them, but uh, I don't know. I remember so many things about that, but uh, they were shocked. They were stunned because they, they probably had already made their plans to go to uh, Sacramento. Yeah, well, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I remember it being a lot of fun. Yeah, no. Uh, you, go you ahead, go. Fish. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I remember a lot of, lot of music, a lot of dancing in the locker room. Um, I just thought of something, too. I remember talking to the Riverside assistants after, and uh, they just flat out said, you guys wanted it more. And I, and I wanted to make sure I said that. They, they, they flat out said, hey, you guys – Heck of a game, heck of a game plan. You guys just wanted it more. You guys got them to play um, because you just outwilled us, basically. And um, it kind of showed at the end there. But, yeah, no, it was it was a blast in the end. Um, if I remember correctly, there's a pool behind the locker room. Might have yeah. been people jumping in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there was there was some uh, there was some fun times for sure. I remember yeah. Coach Fisher's sprint, though. I think after you're in, he sprinted down to uh, – Bobby and CJ, the uh, they were two yeah. coaches from other schools, and they're they're longtime friends. The East LA head coach and uh, Grossmont assistant head coach were there, and and uh, Fish took his four nine forty, and because it was exactly 49, 40 yards, so uh, he was sprinting, and then I never seen a guy go, and he was running. I think he still had his headset on too, so that was pretty <laughs> funny to see, if I remember that. <laughs> Definitely showed how bad of an athlete I am. <laughs> oh i know hayden you had to have something yeah we we had a good time in the locker room that's for sure we we danced we there's tons of music and it didn't just stop there you know it was the whole bus ride home it was ruckus because what we always tell our guys defensively is hey enjoy this win for 24 hours even though we knew what we had ahead of us you know, win or loss, we get 24 hours to get over that loss or to enjoy that win. We made sure we enjoyed that win on the bus ride home. Um, we even had, you know, pa I think Pastor Carter was even on our bus at that time, and he was he was dancing around a little bit too. So, <laughs> you know, it was a, it was a good atmosphere. It was a good vibe, and you know, again at that point. For us, as even as us as coaches, you know, we we were excited because we had been there a couple of times and hadn't got it done to that to that point. Um, so, I mean, I just remember our little locker room was, a, you know, we, we get in there and it's not a very big locker room. So you're all kind of just right on top of each other and you couldn't just everywhere you looked, you couldn't just you, it was just smiles everywhere and, and, and big grins. And it was it was just a great time. It was. Well, the fans will be in for a treat this Saturday. Uh, if they didn't get to watch it live that day, uh, they're going to watch, like I said, probably the biggest game in VC football history, uh, the biggest win, a lot of emotion, a lot of great football played by us. Uh, Coach Fish, Coach Hayden, thanks for coming on today. Coach Moose, it's been a, a great no season season kind of thing, right? <laughs> it, it, it certainly has. And, I, you know, I hope we'll, we, to be continued this spring. Um, hopefully everything uh, works, works out, which I'm very optimistic about it. And uh, we're going to have to work on our uh, decade, uh, dec all decade team now next. It, <laughs> we may have to start putting some voting out there on Twitter and, uh, go back but we're uh, we're getting close to releasing that that might be what we have to do up until the time we play yes so you know fans remember uh on the crown plaza Ventura beach vc sports network saturday night 6 p.m we're going to relive the 2018 socal football championship against riverside city college again thanks coaches for coming on uh throughout this this fall season uh this will probably be our future summer gig we'll be get on zooms and watch some games from the year before and, and talk about it and you know, get it out there. And, you know, to all the players, you know, that were in the program before this on the program and now part of the program, you know, hopefully they got to see some great history uh, that they're a part of. So again, thank you guys for coming on. Thank you for giving that insight to, to our fans and, you know, hopefully February we're hitting the pads and playing some games. Sounds good. All right. Thanks you guys. Thanks Thank for you. Having us.